Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2Design. In this video, I will show you how I export my stylized rigged character from Blender to Unity. In my latest course, I show some tricks and tips on how to build a rig that is suitable for game engine. A little disclaimer here, this might not be the best solution or the best method, but I've been using this method for 3 years and it worked flawlessly. I've also reviewed this method with two tech artists and riggers and we figured it was not that bad. So might not be the best, but at least it's not the worst. So we are going to export two versions of this character. One classical rig and the second one a rig with a solution. He seems to be so happy to be a rig character, look at him. So let's first export our character so that we can see how it works in Unity and then if we get some bugs and if we do and we will, we will fix the bug. Here in Blender, I have two mannequin characters with two different rigs sharing the same animation because the controllers are the same. One important thing whenever you want to export a character to a game engine is to make sure that only the deformation bones currently have the deformation option. So make sure that you uncheck deform on all the other bones by pressing Shift W and clicking disable. You may find other method where the instructor or the user will bake the animation onto a deformation armature which is separated from the control armature. But we don't need to do this. The only thing you have to ensure is that the deformation bones are not parented to the controller bones, but they are parented to a root bone, for example. And the whole deformation chain is independent. So that whenever we select our character and its armature and go to File Export FBX, we can then select here only deformation bones. Make sure you select selected only if you have multiple characters or objects inside your scene and apply the scale and transformation. Even if it's an experimental feature, it's pretty stable. Then we can get rid of the leaf bone because it's a Maya option. I just leave everything enabled. I will make a first export for the mannequin 1 and a second export for the mannequin 2 and then we can launch Unity and create a new project. I will click the new button then select 3D as a template, give it a relevant name and click create. I will then create a character folder for my asset and I can drag and drop the FBX inside it or I can go in the Windows Explorer and copy and paste those into the asset folder. They will automatically appear in my Unity library since it is linked to the file iroc. FBX file can be compared as content files, meaning that inside you will find your mesh, your armature, the animation, the material slots, etc. If I now drag and drop one of the two mannequin inside the scene, they will then appear in the scene hierarchy. So I will create a pair of materials so that we can add them to our character to make it look a little better. So I will right click into the asset library, click create material and create two different materials. One will be a light beige, the other will be a dark red as our character in Blender. Then when I select my character asset inside the scene and I select its mesh, I can see there are two slots for the material. I just need to drag and drop the material into those slots. Now if I click the play button on the top bar, my character won't be animated. This is because we are lacking a controller to currently drive those animations and to say to Unity which animation he has to be playing. So we will create this controller which is called an animator. I will then drag this animator inside the controller slot of our character. And once done, I will select one of the animation of the character that is included in the FBX and drag it inside the animator window. Now, when I hit play, my character will jump once. If I want the animation to loop, I need to get back to the FBX, 
then select the animation, set it to loop and apply. This will update the FBX library. Now if I hit the play button again, my character will be jumping and jumping and jumping. Woo! So if you have a good eye, you may have spotted already a little bug. Now to showcase it, we will add the second character, which is currently the first one. I will add some material to it, create an animator and add the animation as a loop also onto this character. Both characters are sharing exactly the same animation, so there is no problem, but I just need to source the two different FBX. Don't do drugs, kids. Then I've just added a plane for the ground and tweaked a bit the lightning so that we can compare both animation now. So you can see both our character executing the same animation, but the white one seems to be a bit buggy and when we play it frame by frame we can see its feet going crazy, the ground is clipping, the feet are moving, etc. And this is due to the stretching problem. We are currently scaling the legs, as you can see here. They are getting longer, the head also is scaled, the body is scaled, and all the bone in the eye rocky are getting buggy, meaning that if I scale the hips and the legs are parented to the hips, then the legs will get buggy. Since those legs are also scaled, they will make the foot bugs, etc. The weird thing is that our left character is playing exactly the same animation flawlessly and we will see how I've set up this character. When I open them inside of Blender, we can see that they are sharing the same animation and it seems that the animation is running flawlessly. Now if I double check their deformation bones, we can see that they have exactly the same animation and that most of the bones are stretching or get squashed during the animation process. So why our second character is getting buggy while the first on the left is okay since they have exactly the same setup. And here when I enter edit mode you can see they currently don't have exactly the same setup. The deformation bones of our first character, the one that is not bugging, are all parented to the root bone, meaning that they are not connecting one with each other. While our second rig has a more classical parenting chain, the legs are parented to the hips, for example. So if you have a bit of experience in rigging, you may think that it should bring the same bug as in Unity. But all these bones that appear in green are under a copy transform constraint from a secondary bone chain. So Blender will override the parenting hierarchy. The copy transform occur after the parenting. So whether they are parented or not, the copy transform constraint will override the transformation of each bone. So it may sound a bit obscure here, but now if we translate this inside of Unity, it will be way clearer. Because Unity can't use those constraints. They are made inside of Blender, by Blender and for Blender which is great. And we only have exported the deformation bones inside of Unity, which is a great thing because limiting the number of bones will make our scene to run smoothly. But if we now check the armature hierarchy of each character, let's start with the bugging one first, we can see that there is this parenting hierarchy. While if I check the hierarchy of the red character, the one that is not bugging, we can see that all the bones are separated. And that will make a big difference, because here, when I hit the play button and I select a bone, we can see that its position, rotation and scale are modified in real time or are animated. But each bone will have its own animation. While on the other character, the position, for example, is not animated because it's following its parent, but the other channels are animated on top of the hierarchy. So it is already scaled and rotated by the previous bone, and then its own rotation are applied on top of it. While on the other character, all the bones are moving independently. And this is super useful whenever you want to do tracking for FX, for example. Because the bone transformation channel are evaluated based on the root bone position, since all those bones are only parented to the root bone, which is very handy and used by most engines. 
while on the other character, the transform channel of the bone is evaluated based on its parent. For example, the end bone transformation channel is based on the forearm bone's position. The other benefit is that it seems to respect the animation curve at export, like this handle set to vector in Blender, and it seems to be set as vector also in Unity. And if you remember in the beginning of the video, I've just clicked the export button. I haven't baked the animation. If I select another channel, you will see that it hasn't written additional keyframe on every frame. It has only written a keyframe wherever I have moved a controller inside of Blender. So this perfectly fit this kind of character where I want a very stylized animation with a lot of squash and stretched so that I can get a very dynamical animation with good shapes reading. But there is a downside to this, is that we can't use the humanoid rig inside of Unity. So you can't retarget animation, you can't use motion capture, and you can't use automated rigging system inside of Unity or other engine using this type of rig. So if you are working on a fighting game, for example, such as Dragon Ball Z or a game like League of Legends, where you want a very specific animation for each character, this is the way to go. You will have absolute freedom on your rig. But if you need to use mocap library, ragdolls, or if you have thousands of different characters but with the same proportion and you want to use the same animation on them, like in games such as Total War Warhammer, then you should keep your bone parented and keep a humanoid friendly rig. This will wrap up this video. If you want to learn effective rigging inside of Blender, check out my newly released course. See you!